Hey players, welcome to my Steel Dawn update, workaround, and fix video. I know so many building tricks broke last month, and we're all a bit salty about it. Today, we're going to look at ways to fix a bunch of the tricks they took away, including counters, stacking poles and stacking stairways, placing poles and railings, and two floating methods, including one we thought was done for, plus a few other random things. So stick around, and we'll get to it. We're going to start with cupboards and counters, because this is a big one. You used to be able to just stack them on top of each other, go three high, and they would snap side by side. Then you could delete underneath. How convenient, right? Or start them on top of a fridge and bring them over. But now they require support underneath. There are a couple ways to get around this. What I'm doing here first is a reverse merge. That's when you drop an item into something that'll pop it up instead of sink it down. Your camp module is by far the most convenient for this. Many of you may not have seen this, or maybe you used it to float a flat screen TV. Also, you see how I started with them right next to each other? That way you know they're all lined up and ready to snap together when you're done. Okay, let's do this a little bit faster. <laughs> Otherwise this video would take forever. You want to drop them the same number of times, then compare to make sure they're even. Next, we want to put them back in reverse order so they match up. Once you do that, you'll see ya, they snap just fine and they don't use any extra budget this way. Because they're floating, you can actually use this both back and front so you can make a counter surround with it. Oh, that looks pretty sweet. Method two is the conduit method, and I love conduit. I'm measuring first here and getting them placed so I can figure out where to attach the conduit. One great thing about this is that one piece will stay behind if you delete another. I love building materials that don't get too attached. So I'm building a cross that I'm going to use the middle bar to build with. So I did that third over to the edge. I'll pull these away, it'll stay behind to line it up when I'm done. I'll speed it up again in a second, but I'm gonna put this conduit on the ground and then line it with the back of all the counters. Since it comes in multiple sizes, you can do two to five counters with one piece. I couldn't pick the bar up where I had it originally, so I had to hang it off the edge. But now I've got all three lined up with the back and I can grab the long piece this time. Take a look. Conduit is amazing. It'll snap right on that piece that's still there floating. So you can use this to float almost anything that could possibly link to another object. Basically, conduit is like rugs, but for the air or anywhere. Now you're using more budget with this than the floating method because of the one more piece of conduit. Also, you can see that piece, so I'm putting a nifty lamp there. <laughs> Make it look like track lighting. Okay, let's power it up so you can see. There we go. Very kitcheny. Not the cleanest, but you can spruce it up. And hey, it is the wasteland. Let's hop on my air mattress <laughs> and fly over to Tyler County Fairground. That's one of the flattest workshops and a great place to show you the next couple things. Let me clean this place up. Don't worry, I'll do it quickly. I do want to slow down for a second and show you some of my blueprints. I'm a big fan of blueprints for defense and building. I have multiple plans for double or single turrets. And you'll notice on this one, you can still attach a railing to those defenses. There are definitely ways you can use that for second floor rails too. Okay, all cleaned up. I built a little something something to show you. I'm pretty excited. Ah, <sighs> yes, floating stair gantry whatchamacallits. You can definitely still do this. Great for your UFO builds and any number of floating builds. But first, let's get into freely placing columns. I took a little bit and put together a nice modern style structure for you. You'll notice I'm using wallpaper in a workshop. It's totally possible if you save blueprints of a single wall piece with wallpaper on it. You can then place them in a workshop. Save several styles and you can use them in any build if you want to. So, back to you freely placing column pulls. I've saved some blueprints of them stacked already. We're gonna go with the one that is tall and small. That's full size and half size. I pre-made these using floors, which is the way you have to stack poles now. I'll show you that a little bit later in the video. See, I can stick them wherever I want. <laughs> no, not like that. <laughs> I'm using a roof at the seam of the poles to make it work. So let's do a half wall here to leave a door. And this is just for show, so it's not that even. But let me back off and I'll show you how it looks. 
Now we're going to do the same here up front. The front is two stories tall and the side was a story and a half. So for this one, we're using two stair poles on top of each other. And ta-da, look at this. We can do this because the flat roofs kind of lubricate them and let them slide right in. And once I'm done, I'm gonna get in there and delete the roofs with prejudice. Because even though we can do this, I really don't love all this extra crap. <laughs> okay, let's do a quick walkthrough. You can see what I did for a structure. It's a simple modern with offset walls and heights for style. A lot of room for your lights and a conduit chandelier would be perfect in a space like that. Those are great when you've got a lot of room. Finally, a vault tech logo. Perfect accoutrement for the modern home. Okay, let's talk railings. I set these up here already, including the wooden ones you can no longer snap. I was gonna just show it to you and tell you how to do it, but let's go back in time and I'll show you what I did real quick while I was building. I realigned the foundations to put this down because they were offset and then added a garage door. Now, a garage door is able to trick a rail on an upper floor so that it feels like it's anchored. Probably because they didn't remove that attribute from the top of the door when they did from the floors. Or there's just something magical about it. <laughs> I heard about this through the builder chat grapevine. And then Kova Camps did an awesome video explaining this and that you can also use a powered door, which I didn't know. I wanted to be sure to shout him out for that. Check him out, Kova Camps with a K. While we're here, let's look at a couple other railing options. Miss the wood ones, of course, and you can use them in the way I just showed, but it's not always convenient. These white picket and the wire ones still work well. You can free place them, but the gates and one of the other pieces can actually snap. Honestly, these new catwalk railings are pretty fantastic too. They took wood and they gave us these. They don't really snap, but you can line them great along the edges <laughs> or uneven like I did here. And now the moment you've been waiting for, floating stair gantries. <laughs> so people thought this technique was gone for sure. But as you can see, we can still do it. I'm gonna do one for you partly from scratch here. Put down a floor and a wall and a roof like we just did when free placing the pole columns. Then put that roof right at the level of the seam. Like I said, it acts like lubrication kind of. I don't know how it works, but it does. Then I'm gonna grab this blueprint, which is the stair gantry with two poles attached. Look familiar? It should. It's just like the old one, but with two poles instead of one. And here we go. Boom. Now that it's attached, I can just delete everything under it. Not only can I delete it, but I can also blueprint it at this point. The great thing about it being on a foundation is you can raise and lower it as needed, or even make a two-story one to get higher. Let me show you my blueprint. See how convenient that is? I can move it anywhere up and down and all around and place as many as I need. I realized I went through that a little bit fast. So I'm doing another section here to explain just how we stack the poles and create the blueprint in the first place. So first, let me show you the float stairs. I create the C and this time I'm just gonna put that column here on the edge. And there we go. Yes, you can place anywhere if you want, but let's get our stair gantry, just the regular one. And this is so freaking easy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, you can't stack stuff on top of the gantry or on top of the pole anymore, but that bottom attachment point is still there and it's beautiful. Now let's just blueprint this. Make sure to blueprint absolutely everything, including the pole, and that way it will place without a need support error. I've created a little bit of a thing here, but this is to show you how to make the pole stack in the first place. We're using roofs to place, but you need to use floors to create the blueprint. I already have the double pole that you've seen, so let's turn it into a threesome for you. And this here is set up wall, floor, wall, floor, wall, floor with stairs on the side so we can get the floors in. <laughs> now we've got three of them stacked. Let's make a cool blueprint. Select the poles and nothing else. And of course, if we're ever gonna put this down, we're gonna need at least two roofs now. So it's twice as high as when you're placing the double pole before. 
And what are we going to use this for? Stacking the prefab stairs. You can do this inside or outside your camp since roofs go anywhere. Here, let me start setting it up so you can see how I'm going to place that triple pole blueprint. Right, Get our roofs ready. And here we go. Just snaps right in. Yeah, even though there's three, you've got roofs between each junction so it works. And that's all you need to uh, get started. I'll leave those roofs there. Now let's get some stairs. Hmm, I'd love to stack stairs. I wish I could. Well, just watch. So the second ones won't go in because of the pole above. Remember, they don't attach up top anymore. They've got the lower attachment point. So let me delete that. And actually, I could put a set on top of the third pole, delete the pole, and then do the middle. But let's just do the middle since I just did that. And there you go. Totally stacked. Let's neaten it up and admire our handiwork. This next bit of the video, I actually recorded before I finished my current camp in a Christmas break. I wanted to show you guys a couple of things, including a floating method, because Mr. Sexy Hand did his uh, video on all the camp nerfs, and I'm like, you know, let me show you a few things to make up for it, and that's where the whole idea for this video started. It got a little bit bigger than I meant. Check out these shelves. You don't even need marsupial to get up. Anyway, after I recorded this, uh, DTD also did a video on this same method. I'm calling it the catwalk method. That means you might have already seen it, but let me show you how it's done. Yeah, catwalks are awesome. I figured this out because I was doing this double hexagonal build with the catwalks in the air, and I tried a bunch of configurations, and I had to redo the little hexagonal circles a couple times. It's a pain in the ass. <laughs> but I figured this out while doing it. Let's speed this up a little. I'll show you real quick how to float a camp using the catwalks. So I got the stair attached. You can delete the catwalks. You've got the floating stair. Attach your floors. Of course, anything you put can't be removed until you reattach it to the ground. There you go. I could fill it out, but we're just doing this for now. Also, while we're here with these railings, which, see, look how nice that looks. Ta-da, they also float. People don't know that yet in a lot of cases, but they are fantastic floaters. You can add conduit or rugs to it and build off them. Or you can just stack some kitties, because why the heck not? Okay, summary time. And what did we learn today, Bunny and Mr. Fuzzy? Well, we learned that sometimes camp nerfs happen. And I don't think there's an agenda on Bethesda's part to get rid of a lot of our build tricks, but I do think sometimes an engineer looks at something and says, wait, that's not supposed to do that, and fixes it, without seeing the big picture necessarily. They might not even know, because we do some pretty funky stuff. <laughs> but as a community, we can keep coming together, keep finding ways around things, and keep on beautifying the wasteland. Thanks so much for sticking around, guys. I hope you learned something or got some new ideas. And if you're new around here, please like and click that subscribe button. You'll find all kinds of things here. Tips, tricks, a lot of weird artsy stuff. <laughs> but that's what I like, and hopefully you find it amusing. If you really like camp building, check out my Twitch channel, United Wastelanders Network. And if you've enjoyed hearing my slightly annoying voice this long, maybe check out one of my podcasts. I do a weekly Fallout show called The Fallout Feed. We do roundtable discussion, all the different Fallout games, quests, news, and pretty much everything that isn't Fallout 2 because podcasts. Also, Dames Who Game, which I do with my fellow Dames Who Game. Thanks so much for watching my video. If you have any comments or questions, uh, please put them in the comments below, and I will see you in the wasteland. <laughs>